You ready for the Daytona 500 or what? here washing the tires it is Thursday May 28th or 29th or something like that got about two weeks till the race coming up on two weeks here so finally got the car up on jack stands gotta do some tire work here and uh, start getting my new gear together any all gears gonna go in here before the race um, I'm gonna put the other carb on and just go over the car so Night one starts now. All right, so we've got these all rolled out, measured up. Now we're gonna flip a couple of them and grind and sipe a couple other ones. And Eric's gonna put his magic touch on it. Put that extra sticky stuff on there so they grip. We'll be rolling. I think I break the bead first. All right, so Chris showed up, yeah. and there's some shit rolling around in this uh, tire. We didn't know what it was, we thought it was mud. Remember I showed you guys how to seal up the tires with RTV? Well, must use a little bit too much on that one. This one's a little bit stubborn. A little? A lot of bit stubborn. Too tight, the wire? No, it's like somebody uh, almost cut it. <laughs> what? And then stopped. Like literally, that's what it looks like. It looks like somebody almost cut it and then stopped. A purple wire? Yeah. Is, there's a bunch of uh, copper showing on it. Yeah. Uh oh. All right. Well, we got some more. Uh... Damn, dude. What happened? This thing ain't even on the stand right here. There you go. <laughs> this, this frame, nice and safe. This frame is so twisted on this thing that it only has the, uh, three jack stands that actually will right here, hold right. it up, and then the last one just is kind of floating around there. That one. It's a little small one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Huh. That goes to the starter. Yeah. All right. Well, that is the list. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> Going over everything, make sure that uh, nothing's going to break during this next race. He already found something wrong with it, and I'm sure we'll find some more stuff. Yeah. We already got the tire work done for tonight. Sure Eric's, for what are you doing over here, Eric? Too. Piecing this stuff together? <laughs> Again. Piecing this uh, body that's had one too many nights on it together? Uh -huh. We're gonna find some more stuff, I know it. Yeah. All right, so I got the tires out there that the boys flipped last night. Uh, I went ahead and rewashed them. I got another one over there in the shopping cart. That shopping cart, as you guys know, is my paint booth, um, but I also turned it into my tire prep stand. It fits pretty nicely in there, and 
obviously you have to take it out and turn it when you want to you know get to the bottom tread there but it works pretty good for me i've been siping them all up and uh it's working pretty good i want to tell you guys that last weekend i had the opportunity to go and uh see some racing out of state it was pretty fun i ended up going to tennessee and watching uh two nights there um it was memorial day weekend originally i planned to uh go out there and see four nights of racing i was going to see a friday night saturday night sunday night and monday night um but that was before the whole coronavirus hit and uh didn't really work out that way a lot of the tracks opened back up for the first time this last weekend with stand uh the grandstands and fans and everything being there so the schedules got all messed up i ended up only seeing two nights of racing but um it was super worth it it was really cool um went ahead and i saw smoky mountain speedway the first night in tennessee um and then i went and saw duck river also in tennessee uh raceway the second night and man that was some cool racing uh huge huge late model country i couldn't believe it there was you know anywhere from three to four late models uh late model classes a night um so that was pretty cool what really struck me was the uh amount of cars they had there there was a ridiculous amount of cars um the second night at duck river they had nine classes running in one night um but it was pretty cool because none of the tracks really had any curfews because they're out in the country um i did stop off and see a couple other uh tracks just to see what they look like i believe i saw 411 speedway which is right there in knoxville that was a really nice looking track um also saw wartburg speedway and pass through fort Payne in alabama um and saw that speedway they all look pretty nice but um you know they're all pretty much out in the country so they got no curfews and we're sitting there you know one o'clock in the morning and they still got four more classes to go four more features so that was pretty cool to see all the uh, fans sticking around and not really caring about the time and watching the races the first night uh, i missed it it was on friday night they were up north and i couldn't get up to that race but they ended up um getting the last race in as the sun came up around 6 or 6 30 i think they said which is just incredible um but it was really cool i really wanted to go out there and mainly see the uh the crate race in usa street stock series the baddest street stocks in the world or whatever they call it um, that's the real reason i went, wanted to go over there and see the racing was to watch those guys i i love that class uh, i think they do a pretty good job um and obviously the car counts are huge everywhere you go so that was really fun to watch those cars run um but now i'm back and i'm working on my own stuff just a little update this motor i've had here for a long time i had a buyer for it and the guy uh backed out the last week or so um said he had some medical issues or something i don't know maybe coronavirus and then I went ahead and got working on this thing. This cylinder has not bolted down yet, but this is the, uh, the 200 TDI diesel uh, Land Cruiser or Land Rover motor that I'm doing for uh, a guy. And he came over, and I think this paint looks pretty cool, personally. Uh, I'm not really a big, you know, flashy gold bling bling guy, but I think this came out pretty well. Um, so he painted this up, and I just got to bolt the cylinder head on after I did the valve job and set everything up. Uh, as far as valve springs and whatnot so this is about ready to get out of here so i'm getting it done little by little but this guy's got to go so i gotta find another buyer for that um but i'm over here right now siping this tire um this is the first time i really ever siped tires before i've grooved them quite a bit you guys have seen this uh in one of the videos before my heated groover slash siper here um so yeah normally just some grooving them but the uh the racetrack i'm going to antioch speedway on june 6th i just saw they had a race last weekend with no uh no fans in the stands but they had like 150 cars there out of three classes and the track was just beautiful in my my eyes it was beautiful it was totally bone slick top to bottom it didn't look very rough at all so um i'm gonna start siping them now it's normally never like that normally it's always hammered down heavy tracks so i'm grooving them but um We'll see how this goes. I am siping the middle, side to side here. And then on the edges here, I'm going all the way around the circumference and doing it that way. I don't know if that's the best way or not, but I'm gonna try it out and see how it works. All right, so I got all the tires, siped, grind, um, 
I didn't groove any. So just siped and grind and flipped. So that's all done. Now I'm moving over here. What I got going on here now is my gear, ring gear bolts. So if you guys remember, this is my other gear that I run on the shorter tracks. And the boots, the boots, the, the bolts all came loose. And the reason they did that is because they're too long and they bottomed out in the hole. Um, so what I'm doing is here's the uh, original bolts that are in there that came loose. Thank the Lord that they didn't come all the way out or snap and then go through the gear set because the gear set looks perfect still. So what I'm doing here is I got a whole new set of bolts here and I'm trimming them down. I'm taking about two threads off, two or three threads off the, uh, the new bolts. So they're gonna be short enough to go in there and not bottom out. And I just took my paint pen, a little uh, dial caliper, and marked them all up. I'm gonna chop them. These things are real hard, hard material, so they uh, they don't go too well with this cutoff wheel. But I'm gonna work my way, get all of them done, and then slap them in. Pulling these old ones out, you could say they're pretty loose. I didn't, I didn't loosen these at all. That one's kind of stuck right there. But yeah, these uh, these were on their last legs. Anyways, uh, what I did was uh, after I moved the old bolts here, I took one of the, uh, the pre-cut bolts before I cut them all, which was originally this length right here. And what I did is I threaded this all the way in until it bottomed out so I know where the bottom of the hole is anyways then I marked it with a paint pen right up against here and what I did after that took that right there took the new bolt that I just cut and lined it up and you can see I got a couple threads now before they uh, would bottom out so these are good to go some red Loctite Run a pattern again. Hopefully, uh, everything's still in uh, in place and it didn't move at all. I don't think it would, but I'm just gonna check it anyways and remeasure the preload, pinion preload, and uh, side bearing preload all together. To make sure it's ready to go. Looks good to me. All right, so I got all these bolts in here. Put a bunch of red Loctite on them. Got them down real tight. Pattern looked okay. I'm not gonna change anything. And backlash is within spec. So this thing's ready to go back in the car. Just gotta yank the old one out. Gotta rip the drive shaft off. Get my, uh, get my pan hard bar bracket off and pull the axles from both sides and get the center link out. Third member comes out as a pumpkin and put this guy in. This might be something for the hillbilly boys. We'll see. All right, so I got this left rear tire or possible left rear tire out here. Aired up to 60 pounds, letting it grow a little bit, trying to get my stagger right. Um, I was going to go ahead and start draining the oil and drain the rear diff and get a head start on that. But unfortunately my catcher, oil catcher is full. So I'm gonna have to drain that uh, another day when I go back to work. So um, kind of on a stalemate right now with the race car, waiting to put that gear in that I just built. As you can see, this place is a mess. So I'm gonna take this time to just kind of clean up the garage and it's about to start sprinkling out here, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get some stuff down out there as well. So. That'll do it for this video. Uh, you guys stay tuned for a video coming up. Hopefully you'll have all the Hillbilly crew over here working on this thing, getting the gear together um, and just the miscellaneous stuff like the oil change and things like that here pretty soon. Um, so you guys uh, keep an eye out for that video coming up and we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching as always. Didn't really do a whole lot in this video, but uh, got to start somewhere. So looking forward to June 6th at Antioch Speedway. Hopefully you get some good luck. Thanks for watching, guys.